Welcome again to series two of Corona Chronicles, where we're walking through Mark's Gospel. And in today's episode, we're just going to spend time looking at the incredible compassion uh, of the Lord Jesus and this this part of his ministry. So uh, if you want to get an idea of who, who, who the man was, uh, then this is a great place to be. So this is chapter one, verse 29. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the house of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who were ill and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Yeah, I mean, so uh, we've just had Jesus in the, in the section before this teaching at synagogue, mm. and he's just sort of cast out a demon there, uh, so sort of healed a man in a sense, had shown authority, and people were um, getting quite excited about his authority. But now he's left the synagogue and he's gone straight sort of, just sort of went from one place to, to another, didn't mm. he, quite quickly. And he could have had every reason in the world to go, do you know what, guys, I've taught all day. I'm quite tired. I might just pop to bed. Absolutely. But you, you're right. Here, you know, what was Jesus the man like? Here he, he, he immediately goes to help Simon's mother-in-law. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I think that's right. And, and, and of course, you know, Jesus is the, is the sovereign Lord of history and he, he knows uh, what he's doing. Um, but the way these Gospels are written, it, it does sound like the Lord Jesus is really willing to be sidetracked uh, yeah. for, for the sake of helping people, yeah. um, which is what he does here. And it's just a beautiful scene, isn't it, really? Mm. And there's so many of these little vignettes, these little um, portraits of Jesus entering into people's suffering. Um, in order to help them, mm. uh, not not being, uh, you know, just here to download teaching, irrespective of who's he's around, and, yeah. but but actually really caring and feeling compassion, that kind of gut wrenching compassion for mm. the people he's with, and it's just, I just love the details, you know. Uh, so he went to her, took her hand, mm. helped her up. The fever left her. She began to wait on them. Uh, it's really lovely, yeah. isn't it? Because yeah. you imagine it's the same. I mean, later on we'll get to him sort of encountering people with leprosy and embracing them. Mm. He didn't need to. He could have just said, "Be healed." Mm. But he didn't need to take her hand. No. But it's you're right. It is such a lovely detail that he would do that. It is because that's probably right, isn't it? Like she's an old lady. You know, she's a lady. She's. Um, he, he just has compassion on her. It's such a, a tender moment. Yeah. Um, for him just to take a hand, yeah. It is, and there's a, I think you're right about that, and I think that detail is constantly put in, and it's, I think it's also a way of saying that Jesus is going to take the sufferings and the afflictions into his own hand. Mm. You know, he's going to draw them away from the person, in right. one sense, and uh, ultimately that's fulfilled at the cross, which mm. is where we're going, where Jesus is going to take in himself our afflictions and our sins yeah. and bear them in our, bear them in our place mm. and uh, there's even just little foretastes here of the ultimate future yeah when we rise again with him you know he will finally take away the fevers and the sicknesses yeah. um uh, for for that for that great future yeah um and so you've got that very intimate scene there and then that evening after sunset the people brought to Jesus all who were ill and demon possessed. I mean, I was trying to just think about this as you were reading. It's like, do you ever see those kind of war war zones? Yeah. You know, um, on the, on the news, and there are people. You know, you see those kind of um, pop up hospitals sometimes. Um, yeah. Doctors are in there without all the equipment, and every bed is filled, and yeah. every person has got some terrible injury yeah. and uh the whole the whole town it's like a, the whole town is here mm. at the door each one with their own i mean affliction. that is the most the amazing I know. Thing. <laughs> yeah it's like fair enough all the ill people but this is the entire town the pub's been empty yeah the cinema has been empty everyone's come to this one door yeah to see what's going on yeah and you would think this would be the perfect time for jesus to go you have all observed my amazing powers 
now I'm going to tell you who I am. Yeah. But he doesn't, does he? No. Um, and even the demons are trying to let people know who he was. So uh, in verse 34, he yes. also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. So, I mean, this just, this just shows the plan, I think, of God, that Jesus knows when the moment to reveal himself is. Yeah. Um, and not to let um, sort of other people steal the show or, or yeah. let the cat out the bag too early. Um, there's a plan here. There is a plan here. And and he's in complete control. He is, yeah. And he doesn't want these demons because someone might read this and think, well, if they know who he was, if they knew who he was, why wouldn't Jesus want that going public? Um, but there's a sense in which he doesn't want this distorted message to go out about himself. You know, yeah. He doesn't want um, people to hear a snapshot of his identity from demons. He's come to come to teach fully about himself and the kingdom of God and the yeah. right response to Jesus, uh, to who he is. And, you know, he doesn't want people getting caught up in the soundbite, the distorted yeah. soundbite. Um, Which is that like Jesus can heal all your sicknesses. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. just here to fix your, you know, your broken leg. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There'd be all kinds of, that's right, there'd be all kinds of potential misunderstandings, mm. you know, but uh, Jesus is is, uh, is not wanting that. And again, just the way he, you know, they've all got various diseases. Um, I mean, theoretically, you suppose he could have just said, um, all be well. Right. You yeah. Know? But I don't think that's the impression you get. The impression no. is he's going to take time yeah. for each individual and he's going to step into each case of suffering mm -hmm. and to bring exactly the remedy and the truth that that person needs. Yeah. Um, which is what he does for us, isn't it? You yeah. know, as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, even that picture of taking our hand, it's, it's very intimate. It's very, you know, his focus and attention is on you. And, and that's repeated in almost every story we see him. He just has so much intentional time for every person he meets. Yeah. And that, I mean, I love that this is the first healing in, in this gospel and it's not a high profile, yes. uh, you know, it's not a respectable man in the, in the, in the city or whatever. It's, it's this old lady, yeah. you know, and in those days, particularly a woman was, um, sort of seen as, as lesser than a man. Mm, so if Jesus has gone, you know, an old woman, point, he's gone yeah. to like the, the most sort of insignificant person in this society yeah. and held her hand yeah, yeah. as the first healing. It's quite, Absolutely. It's not quite the, the sort of natural springboard that <laughs> you would think. You would think you would go bigger and higher profile, as you a, say. Yeah. yeah, the sort of a PR um, manager. They would go, what, you, no, come on, Jesus. Yeah, that's right. not where to start. We yeah, need to yeah. aim slightly higher. Yeah, I think that's right. And, uh, you know, a wonderful encouragement for us because one, one day... Not in this life, but one day the Lord Jesus promises that all sicknesses and fevers will be will be taken away, um, and what a day that will be! But he he can he does now offer to take our hands and take our sins away, mm. and he can come to each person, no matter what your background, no matter what your situation, no matter what you've done, and he can take the fevers of our sin and and make us whole. He's got time for each person. Mm. Lots of people get that wrong, don't they? That God is just God could never care about me. God could never come to my life. And but actually, you know, reading about Jesus gives us gives us the opposite uh, uh, truth. So uh, maybe that's you, and you'd like to reflect on that uh, today. And uh, you can join us later in the week for the next next instalment.